Welcome to today's podcast episode. I am very excited for this one because we have been running the podcast for a little bit now. It's probably been about two months. Um, I've gotten actually a lot of really great feedback on the episodes. I've had really good guests, I think, talking about such interesting subjects, and I have been really racking my brain (laughs) around what we need to post to go more in depth around certain things that we're talking about on the podcast. And the biggest one of those uh, sort of factors is on the, or the biggest topic opportunities are on becoming a content creator more specifically and leveraging social media uh, to the extent that these content creators and other people that I know have. And that's really what I want these solo podcasts to be about is like, how can we make the most of our content creator journey, whether that, you know, whether you're a photographer or filmmaker or you're in another niche that is more lifestyle oriented. And this is going to be the first uh, podcast, solo podcast to kick that off. I'm going to give you a little tidbit of information (laughs) that I think we need to talk about, which is first, I've never said this on any of my social media channels. It's never been on my stories even. But I have a pet bird. And when I make all of my content, <laughs> I make sure my bird is very quiet uh, because it's it's a very loud animal. It's, it's a little parrot. And for some reason, he sounds 50 times louder than he actually is. Uh, so you're probably going to hear him throughout this because I can only shoot this in one take. I, I want these podcasts to be very conversational and just more friendly than the more like polished, you know, shorts that are just the whole time, like <laughs> tips and tricks. Like, let's just chill. If you're listening to this, you might be on a walk or just doing something passive. And I want this really just to be like the, the chill tips and tricks videos that I know we can make them. I've listened to a lot of social media podcasts in the past, and I just find them to be either way too business oriented or just like, I don't know, I just get this weird feeling about them. And as content creators, we inevitably have a creative side to us. We definitely can be business minded if you're falling into the new category of like creator, entrepreneur, that kind of style of things. Um, But there's artists here. I know that I've spoken to you. Uh, We just want to make and that's why we are on this podcast because inevitably the channel is dedicated to helping all of us uh, live a more creative life. And I and I almost want to add on to that and just say like, to, and like extract the most that we can out of life to, to be here for a reason, um, I think is just so important. So with that, it's going to take us to the second point of today's video beyond just the parrot, <laughs> which is uh, I'm going to kind of theme these out and really develop almost like a curriculum of podcast episodes so that if you are new to the channel, Uh, You can go back and kind of follow a cohesive train of thought. So this is almost like a YouTube series, but it will live as a podcast uh, more specifically. And if YouTube Music rolls out their podcast features globally, I'll be very excited. Right now, it's only available in the U.S. So if you are tuning in from the U.S., you can find your podcasts on YouTube Music. It will be available on Spotify as well, but uh, that's going to be the primary spot is YouTube. So with that, what are we talking about today? Well, I thought to kick off these solo pods, the first thing that we need to talk about is really uh, what habits a content creator needs to have if they want to grow on social media. And overall, let's assume you're not on social media. What con- what what habits does a content creator need to have to, to make good content? And when it's not on social media, I'm just going to say content equals art uh, and it's more self-expressive than maybe what you're po- posting on social media. Now, I've been doing this for three to four years. Um, A lot of you probably know my story. I I started posting on Instagram um, during a master's of international business when I went to the Netherlands, bought a camera, shot street, and I had never done photography before, but I just was obsessed all of a sudden with like documenting this city that I was in. And then that long tail, the short and sweet of it is now we ended up here. (laughs) If you're curious about my story, we can dive into it, but There's been a three to four year process, I'm going to say, that really um, required this level of discipline that I don't think a lot of people realize they need to have when they're first starting on social media. I know for a fact I didn't. I didn't actually know what I was signing up for by deciding I was going to pursue this. You must be posting every single day uh, if you want to be the pinnacle of your niche. So that said... If you're looking at using social media for a different reason that doesn't require 
world domin domination <laughs> on social media, then you don't need to be posting every day. But I'm going to say the level of commitment that you need to have is crazy regardless. Um, I'm joking about the world domination piece, by the way. I'm just saying like, you know, the Mr. Beasts of the world have this insane level of consistency. And to get there, you need certain habits to be able to do that. But even if you're not posting every day, the habits that you need to develop are still very relevant. And I'm going to say like, you know, take the habits that the best need to have, dial them back to 60% of that. And that's kind of where you need to be at if you want to be actively playing um, on the platforms and making content uh, in any way to be successful. So with that, we're going to say the number one habit that I've come to learn with social media is actually consistency. Um, there's a list of, there's a list that I've drawn out for today, but the first one we're going to talk about is consistency. Consistency is very important because for a few reasons, really the, why I wanted this one to be first is because I recently had a video go viral that, um, was talking about how often you need to post on social media if you want to grow your account. And it's got like 5 million views and a lot of people took issue with the amount of content volume that I recommended somebody to post. Uh, and I literally said, you have to post every day. It has to be in different content formats and you need to actively pay attention to what's working in your niche um, and, and constantly adjust for that. But the main reason why you wanna do that uh, is for algorithmic benefits. Basically content, the more often you post and the better you post, it almost functions as a stepladder on top of itself. So, you know, if one does better than the last and the next does better than the last, your views basically expand over time. That's the simplest way I could put it. If you miss a day, you hinder the opportunity to expand your views quicker. But there are two ulterior motives to posting every day that relate back to the uh, consistency piece that I believe are actually more important and didn't uh, get mentioned in that video. The first one of which uh, is about self-awareness and um, really just knowing yourself as an artist better. Yes, if you post every day, you're serving a platform, but I would actually kind of identify with like you're serving yourself when you post every day more than you should be serving Instagram, even if that's like half true. Um, when you are forced to post every day, you're forced to come up with ideas that are innately yours. Uh, and And you're actually almost going through this activity of like, creating art every day for all intents and purposes. And if you listen to any good creator now that says how did they got to where they got, it's because they woke up and made something and before they went to bed, they made something. And honestly, like if you're not doing that, I, I'd have to question how interested you are in what you're pursuing. If you're not making something in your craft at least once a day, uh, you know, I'll, I'll whittle it down to like five times a week because obviously we're busy, especially in the beginning. Like you, you really have to be focusing on that. But if you don't do that, you like I don't see how you're going to improve. And when I was doing my street photography in the beginning, I was out shooting street four times a week, like at my at my height of it in the Netherlands. And um, I was editing in Lightroom every single day. <laughs> and for me, like social media was more of like a testing ground if the creative worked more so than it was like, I'm trying to grow as a photographer on social media. And it's funny because I came across a quote today that was just like, um, a person had said, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but a person had said like, photographers on Instagram nowadays are better at making content about photography than actually doing photography itself. And I would, I would like identify like, yeah, I've definitely noticed that. Like, <laughs> there's like a certain level where we're better marketers of a tool than we are in the craft itself. Um, so that said, when you post every single day though, you're gonna be very introspective on the ideas that you're gonna create and inevitably your creative is gonna get better as a result because uh, you're, you're forced to kind of get those easy ideas out of the way. In the first 90 days of making anything, those are the easy ideas. I'm gonna say, and and it's like, okay, cool, I'm gonna take a shot of sunglasses on the ground versus, you know, when you're 365 or, you know, three years into, the, 365 days or three years into something, you're looking for the expression on people's faces, you're looking for more difficult compositions uh, in reference to photography. And that's really what's important 
uh, when when you're when you're going through that consistency process is just getting deeper in your niche versus posting one to two days every so often. You know, you're never going to get good at your craft, and and you will you know get outcompeted to a certain extent if if uh, in, in your respective niche, even off of social media, people will get better than you faster. <laughs> That's just the reality of it. Um, but it, you're just also going to cheat yourself because there's only so much time um, that we can pursue uh, improving at something. The third part of that then actually goes back to social media. So what the other benefit of um, posting every single day does is if you are looking to grow on social media, you need to post every single day to be able to show up for your audience. Every niche on social media works off of a credibility score at the end of the day. The people who are best at what they post have the most credibility because their audience believes that they're the go-to person for a specific thing. That's why you need to niche down. Um, And I like to tell people like there's not a problem with niching. I don't actually see like niches as an issue. Yes, they relegate a content creator into a boxed in area or content topic more broadly. But if you are a accountant, and you have a job, right? You, you are an accountant versus you are a fitness content creator. They're both very unidimensional. The reality is if you want to be good at being a fitness content creator, you have to post what a fitness content creator does. Workout tips and tricks, skits, different things, but do it in your own way. An accountant has to do what an accountant does and be very good at it. If they're a musician on the side, if both of these two people are a musician on the side, like fantastic, right? But they can't incorporate that into their job. And I feel like that's where a lot of the misconception goes to with with the social media piece is because it's meant to be social, we feel that we can incorporate more of who we are into it. And you can to an extent, but you need to establish that credibility in your respective niche first. And so it's it's you're a fitness content creator and you're interested in why not they're fighting for each other and you are who you are and you should follow me because you are, you know, so special or something like that. You really have to find that subject matter that's valuable for the audience. And by specializing in a niche, that's that's going to be the way to do it, uh, in, in my opinion. And the more you show up every single day, the faster you're going to be able to establish that credibility, especially if your content is good. And you show up ahead of other people in your niche, meaning that more people will basically pay attention to you over time um, versus somebody else. That's really the key part on the consistency piece. Um, What I'll say then is as you're coming up with your post ideas, I, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how much research actually needs to go into Uh, social media content creation. And so the second part of today's video or the second tip of today's video is about research and why you need to develop good research habits. When you're making content on a daily basis, there is obviously the expression of document don't create. But to a certain extent, um, I think it's a little bit of a give and take. and, And I would say document don't create actually like lives on a spectrum more than anything else. When you are creating new things, you're constantly researching, but most importantly, you're living inauthentically to your uh, daily life. You're inventing things to show people that might not necessarily be real. To do that consistently is a lot of work, but more importantly, um, when you're documenting, I believe your engagement with an audience on social media will be uh, a lot stronger. The trick then is how do you document your life and then provide value? And that's where research comes in. And it's very evident where research-based creators are are doing better than than other creators. Again, we could go back to fitness or even food as an example. If you have a food content creator who's just doing basic recipes versus someone like Dennis the Prescott who posts amazing food content on social media, who you know is an expert in his craft, who is constantly looking at like how he can push the needle, reading cookbooks, going that next length to to make what he does on a daily basis, which is cooking uh, better, that's going to separate you. And it, you need to do your homework basically to, to get the value out of you documenting your life and, and sharing that with people. The second part uh, on research also isn't necessarily just, do, you know, researching the, the niche that you're in or the subject matter of the community that you're building, but you also have to research the community itself. It's great if you're posting single post images that are shot beautifully, but the reality is, is you're leaving your opportunity on the table if you're not also expanding out into different content formats 
and actively paying attention to the feedback that your audience is giving you that they want to see. There is so much opportunity to create new and inventive post formats for social media. And if you're just relegating yourself to one specific lane without understanding what your audience actually needs to see to get better in that niche, you're really missing out. So looking at your Instagram analytics uh, is, is obviously super important, but more importantly, speaking with your community and doing the research that way is really going to move the needle for you, especially if you hop into the comment section or run polls on your stories once a week. That's where you want to be. The final part is the competitor analysis. Uh, a lot of times a content creator won't actively think about their niche as a competitive landscape. And I would argue you shouldn't um, view everybody as collaborators to a certain extent. You can meet these people and become amazing friends, but you do need to understand what they're posting to understand what you need to post and where the trends of your community are. I'll also mention, I'm always of the opinion, you need to establish what the trends are and either figure out how to do it the best out of everybody in your space or do it differently so that you're worthwhile to follow ahead of somebody else. And that's where competitor analysis is so important is you're not trying to necessarily take someone down, but you're looking at how you can push the needle based on what you've been doing before. And if you focus on how do you get better each time you show up on social media versus being better than someone else, that's that's how you fill your cup creatively. It's it like social media is, in my opinion, exists to um, force you to enter that sort of competitive mindset. Uh, which is unfortunate, but the uh, the challenge that you need to to have for yourself is competing with yourself and and making yourself better uh, al along the way. And and the only way you're going to do that though is by understanding what you need to be better in. And that's where the competitive piece comes in because you're almost looking at your competitor analysis as like a as a as a state of the union of your niche more so than picking direct competitors that you're going head to head against. So that's my one piece of advice. And then like. Write down your trends, like write down what works in the niche. Top down food content shot like tasty was an innovative thing in the food niche when it was released. It now everybody does it right. And now your, your job is okay. Top down food content. That's a content format. That's a trend. How do you do that differently? And then you move on from there. You're not looking to take down tasty <laughs> as a result of doing that. So, uh, that that's my piece on, uh, on the research side of it. The biggest thing when you're doing your research then takes us to tip number three. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got to get a little more comfortable there. Uh, tip number three is on this continuous learning piece. Um, I think I need a new chair. <laughs> this, is, this is grossly uncomfortable doing this for a while. Um, the continuous learning piece is, is what comes with research. Your technical skills, how you shoot things, um, your emerging trends uh, in your space, how the algorithms are changing uh, on social media, uh, your the the way your audience is behaving, your best practices on post formats. These are all very, very, very important um, to be actively paying attention to and and being aware of of what skills you need to develop to combat with these challenges that come with the topics that I just mentioned and. So I think uh, where a lot of conventional sort of like workplace knowledge comes in is like you go to university, you get a job, and then you're done learning. But in 2023, I think if you're not continuously looking at how to level up what it is that you're putting out, you will quickly fall behind because new skill sets are emerging faster than ever. Like if you're not already dabbling in AI and figuring that out, you'd be shocked at how many people are and you're just kind of losing time on that side of it. And and I get it, like that's that sort of like toxic hustle mentality where you always need to be working and always learning. But I think we need to identify as content creators what we're trying to do. And inevitably, like let's just simplicit, simplicitly, <laughs> let's just put this in the simplest sense. Um, as content creators, we're looking to make better art continuously. Forget about social media. To make better art, we need better skills. And it, you're constantly in this process of skills development. I just listened to a podcast with Chris Burkhardt and, and he talked about this at length on, on how unfortunately being a content creator and, and an artist is always about A, an inherent level of risk because B, you're constantly needing to do something new to be able to pursue the craft of, of your art. And 
so it's like a catch 22 in that sense, but you're just the way that you learn, you need to establish for you. I, I can go into another video on, on the way I kind of found an easy way of learning things. Um, but, but you just need to find your own path with that one and, and kind of integrate it into your workflow. You know, maybe Fridays, every Friday, you decide to learn a new thing about how to edit photos better or, or whatever it might be. Because the continuous learning process um, really is about being adaptable. And this is the fourth essential tip uh, for a content creator looking to pursue this. You must be adaptable to change and you must be resilient to market forces, I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, I hate the word market forces. Uh, mostly because it, it, I, I hate when people say the market, that's just my thing. Um, so what I'm going to say is like external forces that you don't have control over. Uh, you have to be willing to move with the times. So using COVID as an example, when the world decided to shut down and we're all stuck inside, I know, uh, there was, there's basically two groups of people that, that happened. Some people decided that they weren't going to do anything at all. And other people decided that they were going to do everything that they could all at once. <laughs> and, and both of those decisions are uh, reflections of adaptability. Some people like there, there's no wrong decision in either way. Um, it's, it's where you were at in that present moment to make the decision that made the most sense for you. Uh, and the adaptability piece is being being okay enough to make the decision that you needed to, um, to, to, to fulfill what your goals were given the current circumstances. So, uh, that's kind of where that comes from. Obviously then the adaptability piece is like, okay, now there's AI, right? So that is a huge, I'm going to say punch to the face to so many content creators who don't see their work as being commoditized. And I'm not saying your work is commoditized, but what I'm saying is AI commoditizes art. Uh, the reason why, you know, we all know you type in the prompt and it spits out a war hall that you can put and print, uh, you know, on your wall, like crazy, crazy stuff. But most importantly, you know, let's say you are a commercial photographer and you're shooting interior spaces for a hotel. You know, you don't actually need to go shoot the interior of that hotel. You can prompt it into AI's existence, get your photos, put it up on the website. So the potential here is ridiculous and the adaptability that comes along with needing to understand how to now navigate the landscape um, is I think where the problems are starting for people where they're like, well, AI is going to take my job and technology this and we need to regulate that. And it's like, yes, absolutely. But we also need to understand what our next steps are before it gets away from us. Uh, I don't have the answer <laughs> to AI. It's literally an evolving conversation. But, you know, over the last four years of me doing this, um, yeah, there's been ebbs and flows. Obviously, nothing as like groundbreaking as as AI, but from the standpoint of like when Instagram moved from single posts to carousel posts, I I started when that happened basically, and uh, and the creators who you know embraced carousel posts did better than the ones that still posted single posts. It has nothing to do with Instagram hating single posts. It has everything to do with carousels being more engaging than single posts and more people wanting to consume them, therefore Instagram pushes them. And it's the same with carousels to reels and on and on and on it goes. You know, TikTok coming out, Instagram reels. It's the same conversation. And I, it's unfortunate because like we think we've mastered one sort of art form and then something new comes out and we need to continuously learn and be adaptable to the change. The next piece then on that sort of adaptability front is understanding what we're being adaptable for. Uh, and I'm going to say that's that's engaging. Um, that That's our engagement on the social platforms. Inevitably, your community is what you're doing this for. And if you're not engaging with them, you're really... I don't, I don't actually, I don't know the point of like, <laughs> you're not engaging with them. You're, you're missing out on, um, I'm going to say the point of social media for content creators more broadly. The trick for a content creator though, is building engagement into, um, their workflow because the engagement piece is, is now on a daily basis. Uh, I think it is conflicting with the process of an artist. That sounds very like hoo hoo, but <laughs> at the end of the day, like let me let me put it to you this way, like how I thought about this. You're an artist and you are in a gallery. You know, you maybe you're an artist and you get a gallery showing, right? You've probably like locked yourself in a room painting 
for two weeks, three weeks. I don't know. We're going to make it up, right? But you're solitary. You're in your creative process for three weeks. When you finally get to the gallery, right? That's your time to now engage with people that have come to know your work. Great. Put that same person on social media and the challenge is now every day you're forced to post. And at the same time, you need to engage with everybody um, that, like on a frequent basis. And so I think this this harms you in a few ways. Uh, so we'll go through that first and then we'll talk about why engaging is so important at the same time. So, so again, there's pros and cons to this. The first one is... Um, the first, the first harm is that when you're getting instant feedback, right, you don't have a chance to introspectively figure out what it is you want to make. And, you know, the coaching for being good on Instagram is to follow what your audience wants to see. The idea is flawed though, because when you first start out again, let's go with the fitness content creator idea. When you first start out as a fitness content creator, let's say you're a really funny person. If you're posting content that's not that that's very funny, I, this is take this example with a grain of salt. You're posting your skits, you think they're great. At the same time, you're also posting tutorial content. The tutorials do extremely well, yet you want to share more funny comedic stuff and make jokes about the gym. All of a sudden, you pivot to the tutorial side of it, and you're very like. You, you know, you're two, three months into the being a tutorial on how to do squats. And in the meantime, you wanted to make like gym bro jokes and have a hilarious time on social media. You've now fallen off of what you could have been very good at, right? Um, and that's the issue with that instant feedback piece. It's the same, same with painting. We'll go back to that example. Like if you're putting out abstract art, but your realism works a lot better on the platform. Now all of a sudden you're painting realism, but you want to be an abstract artist. Goals conflict, right? So that's the issue with the engagement piece. But more importantly with the engagement piece and, and why you need to develop this into your workflow is because assuming you can manage that con, right, of this instant feedback, the information that you're able to get on a daily basis from your audience to inform you, and more importantly, the connections that you're able to establish as a result of engaging on social media will help you unbelievably in the long run. The the amount of friends and just sort of like Instagram friends that I've been able to get by just being on social media and actively going into hashtags and commenting and responding and following and just being a genuine person is ridiculous. And it's like, I don't know how I would meet people without it at this point, especially with the lockdowns over the last few years. Like it's as simple as following somebody, engaging with them, getting to know them, and then going out for a coffee and just hearing their story or going on to shoot one night and doing street photography. Like there's so many opportunities with that. The trick though is your engagement routine needs to be a part of your life. What I learned to do was at the end of every night for 30 minutes, I'd hop on Instagram and just see what I liked. And, and with the mindset of I'm not here to consume, I'm here to engage. And, and that habit is so key for success uh, because otherwise you're just sort of posting into the ether and hoping people pay attention to you. And, and in my opinion, that's a very inauthentic way to use social media as a platform. So make sure you build it into your uh, your, your sort of like daily routine and, and find a way to do it. I know it, for some people it might be a hard idea to wrap their heads around, but trust me when I say you're going to be thankful that you did it two years down the road. And obviously, if you're watching those like Instagram guru videos, uh, they're going to tell you about the engagement rate boosts on your posts. They're going to tell you that it helps your algorithmic visibility. They're going to tell you that it you know increases loyalty, boosts reputation. And I don't really want to focus on the, those parts of it because um, I believe that if you focus on the genuine connection piece, the algorithmic benefits will just come in end effect as a result at some point. So just do good work so good outcomes happen. That's <laughs> that's the simplest way I could do that. It's the same with engagement. Engage authentically, perform performance will be authentic. That that's the way I like to think about it. And it just this is something that just happens naturally. Don't manufacture it. All right, because when we are manufacturing things, <laughs> this goes back to uh this is this is an interesting one. So Habit six, 
um, that I think we need to focus on is this quality versus quantity de debate. Quantity is, and what I mean by this is like, how, how often should you post to actually get results, right? The quality piece is like, if you are a, let's say you're a travel photographer, right? And you have one trip scheduled every week and you're expected to post seven times a week, right? But you can only post five because two of those days you're on a flight and you only have five days worth of content. I'm making up an artificial restriction, right? The reality of those five, like, sorry, you can post, you, you, you can post seven days a week, but you only have five posts that you're actually proud of. Um, and two of those days you want to schedule your posts because you're on a plane and you won't have stories to go along with them or whatever. Do you post five or do you force the seven? right? And my answer is going to be to do the five. Don't force the seven because inevitably everything that we post on the platforms is um, indicative of our brand. And, and, and you have to, you have to really think about this a little bit. Like you need to remove yourself from the equation to an extent. When you're posting on social media, all anybody knows of you is the content. Like that's the unfortunate part. Stories, obviously, you can make it a little bit more personal. You can get more personified. But the things that show up in the feed is the the idea that someone shapes about you. And if you do five incredible posts and two very lackluster bad ones, that idea shifts. And so you have to imagine that every time you post, the idea of you shifts over time. What you need to be able to do is ensure that the idea shifts in the way that you want it to, because inevitably you are crafting a persona on a digital platform. It's not you. You're you're crafting this for someone else to get an understanding of a certain aspect of you. Remember, it goes back to the beginning of niching in a particular bucket for one thing, even though you're not that thing. Like this is the essence of participating on these platforms. So then why would you sacrifice your quality for the sake of appeasing quantity that probably isn't going to get you the results anyway, because it doesn't have quality in the first place. So you see the math is backwards. So what you need to do as a content creator is ensure that you've built the systems in place to get the quality at the level that you need it to, um, to be able to post and get results over time. Yes, if you post seven times a week, the best possible, you'll do better. But if you post five times a week and twice are bad, then you won't get the results that you would have had you've only posted five times over a long period of time. And so I view it as this fight where you're constantly fighting yourself for this perfection dilemma where you're like, okay, well, it's not good enough, but I need to post, but you know, I need to post and it's not good enough or, or, or I'm running out of content. I better go manufacture something. And it's like, stop, take stock of what you're doing. Just have the uh, okayness <laughs> with yourself that like, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> you don't need to force it because if you force it, you're gonna be worse off. And, and just as a reminder to yourself as the content creator um, to always be doing that. Um, that, that's very important. Otherwise you're gonna drive yourself crazy. It's just speaking from personal experience. If you're just constantly out there chasing that next post, you're never gonna be satisfied and you'll never really have a chance to, to build what you set out to build in the first place by being on the platforms or just enjoying your time here anyway. All right, the next piece that's super important is planning and organization. I can't tell you, when you are a disorganized content creator, it's not only shows up in your social media presence, but I believe it shows up in your actual art itself. You need to have systems in place to create. You also need to have systems in place to participate on social media consistently. And more importantly, you need to have systems in place to be able to future think your way through to that story building exercise we just talked about. So number one, document don't create. Your system on how you create content needs to integrate into your life in order for it to be sustainable. If you're creating, it's inherently not, and you're gonna burn out at some point. It just needs to come second nature. Your art needs to come second nature. Um, it, it can't be forced. That's what I found. I think, you know, some people might disagree with that to, to a degree, but because of the volume that's required to, to an extent, um, it, it's conflicting. And if it's not, you're, if you're not systematically making content, 
you're you're just it's just not feasible. Um, because the second part of that is ensuring that whatever you create actually can get up on social media. So content calendars, uh, idea boards, journaling ideas out, just having a system in place to think of things and a loose timeline to post them is going to just ease your mental anxiety to such a degree and just keep things a lot uh, simpler for you, uh, in the long run than having to worry about this is like, some crazy task that uh, is just mismanaged all the time. You just you just need to see that what you're doing is possible to be out there on a daily basis. And I feel like then, as a result of doing that, it takes the the, the pain away. What I like or the the stress away. What I like to do is I use later for a lot of my content. I kind of dip in and out of using a content calendar. If I'm like extremely busy, I'll like find it some time to just schedule it and I don't have to worry about it. And then other times I'm like in it, I'm posting it, I'm commenting on it, I'm doing all of it. And and again, it's just your mental capacity to be able to juggle it constantly. Um, if you need recommendations on content calendars, let me know. I think they're a great tool, especially if you're a social media manager managing content for other brands. Um, I use that for, for any content that I'm third partying. Um, but for my own, like I said, I dip in and out. Um, because then the final part is the uh, the planning ahead. I, I can't tell you, like, I think it's underrated how much time somebody spends in the planning process. It goes back to that research component, but you need, like taking your research and delineating it into post ideas for uh, what you can create in your daily life is the thing that's going to move the needle for you. Because you need someone to look at your feed and go, this is who it, who he, like, who are you? What do you do? And why do you do it within like seconds? Like if you're not there quickly, you are missing out to such an extent. Um, and, 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 and that comes by just seeing how well thought out the feed actually is. So your planning process is almost like an editorial planning process. I didn't understand this early on, but eventually your feed is this like living thing that that is sharing a curated story right because you're removing the things that you don't want to share and you're you're making that sp specific as uh, uh, aspect of of you that you're putting out into the world I'm going to say that with that planning and organization piece, though, obviously comes flexibility uh I, I just should probably highlight like don't stick to the plan if you're getting driven crazy by it like some creators will develop a content strategy for themselves. Other ones will kind of just go with the flow. And, you know, again, on that travel content creator idea, if you're jetting off across the world on a consistent basis, you probably don't need to worry about curating a storyline because you're just, you have such a volume of content already that you can just post whenever and it is authentic to your life because it is what you're doing. Um, but if you're a fitness content creator and you're struggling to go to the gym because maybe you got injured, how about you sort of just do a lateral move and start posting about nutrition and wellness and health and your recovery routine, right? That's that flexibility piece is like you might have to shelve certain, you know, uh, topics that fall under the brand that you're building in, in place of something that is still in line with what you're doing, but is different and might be something you've actually not made before. And that flexibility piece leads us to what I'm going to say is the most important habit for a content creator, which is maintaining your self-care routine. You must have wellness practices in place to be able to navigate social media successfully and really keep up with the volume of content creation that's required. If you're entering a stressed out place or you're anxious or you're feeling overwhelmed by being on social media, that's your sign to just take stock and and not go as hard as you previously might have been. Because um, inevitably we're in this so that we can do this forever. Creative burnout's real. I've been there. Everybody's been there. You got to do what works for you at the end of the day. And yeah, it might be unfortunate because of all of the reasons we just talked about, about why you shouldn't stop posting on social media. But you come first because you are your own, like you're, you're yourself, you're here for you. So if you're not taking care of yourself, why would you post on social media anyway? Like it just doesn't make sense. And I just feel like people need to like accept that more <laughs> and just not feel bad about it. Take breaks. It's okay. Just do what you need to do to, to, to get yourself in the right place and to participate on social media creatively. Because that's that's really at the end of the day the goal. So, with that, I'm gonna uh, 
cut it here because it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long podcast. We're at 45-ish minutes. We'll see. Uh, I want to edit these as minimally as possible. So we'll see where we end up at. Uh, as our first one, I don't want to make this too long though. I'd love some feedback on the length, uh, what I talked about. If you want more personal stories, if you want more information, uh, I tried to do a little bit of a mix of both without talking too much about myself. I don't want to do that uh, personally, just because I feel like um, that story is still evolving. And I really just want these to, again, be here for you. Your little information repositories on things that you need to consider to live life creatively. So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's first solo podcast episode. And with that, I'll uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for listening and watching if you saw it on YouTube.